Peace, everybody. I hope everyone is having a great day. So October 20th of this year, I embarked on a journey to the Dominican Republic to run the Santo Domingo Marathon. It was nothing but an amazing experience. I had the pleasure of having my mother with me and just to get her on a plane was a huge challenge for me because she hates flying. Uh, she hates it so much that she needs to be on medication in order for her to board planes. But um, I kept reminding her that, uh, and I'm gonna make a reference here, that uh, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the overall fatality risk is 0.23% of you dying on a plane crash. This means that you will need to fly every day for more than 10,000 years in order for you to be in a fatal plane crash. On the other hand, the chances of dying in a car collision are about one in 101 um, chances. So, but I understand her, you know, being over 35,000 feet up in the air can be challenging for anybody, especially when you have the notion that you have nothing but air under you and ocean or land, um, it can be, it can be a problem. But once we landed, uh, she came back to herself and that's when the fun started because I had planned a trip for her to get out of the comfort zone and explore the beauty of the Dominican Republic, especially the Peravia province, which actually has sand dunes, it has a salt mine. I have everything in, in this video, so I hope you, you guys enjoy it as much as I did. And, um, you know, let's let's have some coffee while we uh we enjoy this amazing journey. So, peace and always exercise. Santo Domingo Capital, a historical odyssey, founding an early history. Santo Domingo, the vibrant capital of the Dominican Republic, boasted a rich history dating back to its establishment by the Spanish in 1496. Initially situated on the east bank of the Ozama River, the city later migrated to the west bank in 1502 under the direction of Nicolás de Ovando. This pivotal relocation marked the initiation of the city's legacy as the oldest continuously inhabited European settlement in the Americas. As the inaugural seat of Spanish colonial rule in the New World, Santo Domingo held a unique and prestigious status. It served as the birthplace of the first university, cathedral, castle, monastery, and fortress in the Americas, symbolizing the city's cultural and architectural richness across the centuries. At the core of Santo Domingo lay the Ciudad Colonial or Colonial City, a historic central neighborhood bearing witness to the city's colonial legacy. 
Designated as a significant site by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, this area, also known as La Zona, was situated on the west bank of the Ozama River and encompassed 1.06 km within a wall perimeter. The cobblestone streets of Ciudad Colonial guided visitors through a journey in time, unveiling landmarks such as the Alcazar de Colón, a grand palace, the formidable Fortaleza Ozama, a testament to major events in Dominican history, and the awe-inspiring Cathedral de Santa Maria la Menor, the first cathedral in the Americas. Park Coleman, the central public space in the district, featured a bronze statue of Christopher Columbus and served as a hub for exploration. The nearby Caulas Damas, dating back to 2502, stood as the oldest paved street in the New World bordered by significant landmarks like the French Embassy and the National Pantheon of the Dominican Republic. Obelisco de Santo Domingo, a symbol of independence. Prominently standing along Avenida George Washington, the Obelisco Hembra and Obelisco Macho were twin monuments erected to commemorate the Dominican Republic's independence from Haiti in 1844. The female obelisk represented the Dominican Republic, while the male obelisk symbolized the triumph of the Republic. These structures stood as powerful reminders of the nation's resilience and commitment to freedom. Plaza and Monument Frey Anton de Montesinos, a voice for justice. On the Melkin, near the entrance to the Ozama River, stood the monumental statue of Frey Anton de Montesinos, a gift from the Mexican government to the Dominican people. This 15-foot statue, designed by sculptor Antonio Casalanos, served as a powerful reminder of the struggles against tyranny and injustice. against pirates. As a historic fort built between 1E503 and 1E510, Fort St. Gil stood as the first line of defense against pirate attacks. Located on the Malkin, it anchored the city wall that encircled the colonial core where it met the Caribbean Sea. This fortress bore witness to the city's resilience against external threats and served as a testament to its strategic importance. and south side at Punta Torresilla, guiding lights on the Caribbean coast. The Faros and south side at Punta Torresilla, a lighthouse with its distinctive yellow and black colors, graced the entrance to the port of Santo Domingo. Positioned on the coral cliffs of the Caribbean Sea, it stood as both a guiding light for maritime navigation and a symbol of the city's connection to the vast seas that surrounded it. The lighthouse, visible from various points in the city, added to the maritime charm of Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo, with its captivating blend of history, culture, and landmarks, invited visitors to embark on a journey through time and immerse themselves in the stories written on its cobblestone streets and monumental structures. As the heartbeat of the Dominican Republic, the capital continued to resonate with the echoes of its past while embracing the vibrant spirit of its present. So I'm supposed to run a marathon tomorrow, and lots of people like to um, eat a lot, 
a lot of carbs and things like that. I'm not sure, um, you know, I don't, I, I'm not sure if that is even a, uh, the proper way to do it. But what works for me is like eating light, for example, like salad with chicken, mm -hmm. tostones, which is okay. fried plantains and things like that, and lots of H2O. <laughs> works pretty well so that's usually what I do I do eat a heavy breakfast before the race or a heavy meal before the race and um, coffee to make sure that I go to the bathroom before the race very important so if I heavy then I'm not sure if it, my body's gonna process the whole thing uh, throughout the night so light I know my body is actually gonna reward me with um, with an easy trip to the bathroom before the race so uh, there it is, you know, I'm hours away from leaving everything on the field, so peace. On a vibrant Sunday morning, October 22nd, 2023, the sun dawned over Santo Domingo with the promise of adventure as I geared up for the Santo Domingo Marathon. The city, with its rich history and lively spirit, provided the perfect backdrop for this exhilarating journey. Days before the marathon, I made my way to the heart of the city, where the anticipation hung in the air at the Hotel Catalonia Santo Domingo. The convention center, a bustling hub of energy and excitement, was the epicenter for participants eager to collect their bibs and ensure everything was in order for the upcoming race. The convention center, seamlessly integrated into the Hotel Catalonia Santo Domingo, buzzed with the camaraderie of fellow runners. The air was filled with the scent of anticipation as I navigated through the crowd, picking up my bib a tangible symbol of the challenge and triumph awaiting me on the marathon course. As the sun painted the sky with hues of pink and orange, race day arrived. <laughs> In the pre-dawn darkness, the starting line beckoned, a gathering of shadows and silhouettes anticipating the forthcoming challenge. The historic streets of Santo Domingo awaited, each cobblestone holding stories of the city's past and the promise of a personal journey ahead. The marathon course unfolded like a carefully scripted tale, leading us through the iconic landmarks of the city. We traversed the cobblestone streets of Ciudad Colonial, ran past the Oblisco de Santo Domingo, and felt the rhythmic beat of the city's heart as we navigated the Melkin. Every step echoed the history and vibrancy of Santo Domingo. As I ran through the city, the cheers of spectators and fellow runners fueled my determination. The Dominican Republic spirit intertwined with the marathon route, creating a unique and memorable experience. Fans played lively music and locals lined the streets, offering water, encouragement and smiles that transcended language barriers. The marathon became more than a race. It became a celebration of resilience, community and the unyielding spirit of Santo Domingo. My legs pushed Just against everybody. fatigue and every hill presented That's a challenge. Miles completed thus far this morning running the marathon. I am cramping heavily. Oh my God, the humidity here is insane. I'm sweating very much. Mentally, I'm ready. My body is not responding as I wanted to. I'm cramping heavily, I said, and that is not good. Now comes the challenge part of playing with intervals, trying to finish the race at a decent time. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be doing sightseeing, but heavily I am cramping, but one thing that I am not, ladies and gentlemen, I am not a quitter. Never been and never will. Peace. But the support from the sidelines and the scenic beauty of the city provided the motivation to press on. The final stretch of the marathon took me back to the starting point. Here we go. Cuatro horas. Oh my God. Ay. Ay. 
¡Ah! 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 sense of accomplishment and elation enveloped me. I had conquered the streets of Santo Domingo, completing a marathon that intertwined personal achievement with the rich tapestry of Dominican history. That was hard! Four hours, 35 minutes. Now I'm gonna collect my favorite parts. A medal, hola. Wait, 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 wait. The finish line was not just an end, but a beginning and celebration of the journey, the friendships forged on the course, and the city that had become a part of my marathon story. Santo Domingo, with its warmth and vibrancy, had witnessed my footsteps, and I left the marathon course with a heart full of memories and a sense of pride that transcended the finish line. The Santo Domingo Marathon of 2023 was more than a race. It was an odyssey, a chapter written in the historic streets of a city that embraced the spirit of every runner who dared to take on its challenges. <laughs> Dominicana con una presidente bien fría después de quemar tantas calorías y terminar este maratón que fue uno de los más difíciles en mi carrera profesional. Ya lo saben, eso es lo único que tengo que decir. Pero mira que medalla más bella, esa medalla que está súper, súper linda. Salud. Ya lo sabe, caballero. ¿Cómo que dice? ¿Cómo que dice la canción? Todo mi mami. Oye. Todo mi mami que lo doy. Oye, ¿cómo suena la guitarra? Oye, 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 oye. A special addition to our journey was the company of my aunt Esther Colado. The vibrant energy of Santo Domingo had left an indelible mark on our spirits, but the allure of new horizons beckoned us southwest towards the enchanting Paravia province. Our first stop was the city capital of Paravia Bani. Stepping onto its streets felt like entering a different realm, a place where time moved at its own pace. One notable visit was to the Municipal Cemetery of Bani, a place where art and history intersected in a unique tapestry. Amidst the serene surroundings, we marveled at the intricate artwork that adorned the cemetery, each piece telling a story of the lives and legacies that shaped the community. With the city of Bani offering its cultural delights, I decided to take our exploration to new heights literally. The La Barbacoa mountain range, with its elevation gain of 1,743 meters, called out for an aerial perspective. As we soared above the landscape, the beauty of the Dominican Republic unfolded beneath us, and the majesty of the mountains became a part of our collective memory. Continuing our journey south, we made another fascinating stop at the base naval de Las Calderas. However, what awaited us surpassed our expectations. The air crackled with an unexpected tension as we were greeted by heavy security measures. Giant lizards and speedy goats patrolled the area alongside strategically placed missiles and guns. The surreal sight left us in awe and amusement, a peculiar blend of natural and man-made guardianship. The base naval de las Calderas, though unexpected, added a touch of intrigue to our expedition, creating a tale to be shared with family and friends. After visiting the base naval de las Calderas and heading to our hotel, we found ourselves early for check-in. Deciding to make the most of the extra time, we made a delightful detour to Hotel Salinas. Nestled with a panoramic view, the hotel offered the perfect setting for a pause in our journey. At Hotel Salinas, we indulged in the tropical flavors of piña coladas and enjoyed a delicious meal. The azure waters of the pool beckoned us and we embraced a much needed swim, surrounded by the breathtaking landscape that stretched out before us. The panoramic view became the backdrop for relaxation, laughter, and the creation of new memories, a perfect conclusion to a day filled with exploration and unexpected discoveries in Paravia province.
Puse a mi mamá y a mi tía a que se bañen con la ropa que trajeron en el viaje. Sin traje de baño, sin pensar que se iban a meter al agua. Miren, las oportunidades que te da la vida son las importantes. Si la agarras y actúas en ella, las positivas, ¿ok? Te va a llevar a un lugar increíble. Chequea. Ok, tengo los dos que tiraste para acá. Mira aquí, tía. Coleccionando caracolitos. Good morning from Saba Hotel in Salinas. Today's Wednesday brings the promise of adventure. Ready to set sail for a boat ride in the enchanting Bahia de las Calderas. Afterward, we'll return to the hotel, pick up Aunt Esther and Mom, and embark on a memorable hike through the captivating Dunas de las Calderas de Bani. It's a big bird. Oh, hello there. Morning.
3, 2, sí. everybody i hope everyone's having a great day it has been a successful morning thus far been awake since like 5 45 a.m in the morning because i wanted to catch the sunrise and also i uh, wanted to make sure that i get everything all the batteries charged up for the drone and the gopro for the fishing expedition that i had although there was no fishing involved because uh, i failed to uh, to secure the, uh, the fishing equipment. They thought that I was gonna provide that, but um, I didn't have that with me. And when we were, I'm gonna say probably halfway through the point where we were gonna go and fish, it just didn't happen. But besides that, it was, it was, it was great. It's calm sea, beautiful scenery. We ended up going to a couple of other areas where um, it's very uh, historic and things like that, but um, you know, it's just exploring. And uh, I'm a firm believer of just let the flow go. I didn't have a fishing rod, he didn't have a fishing rod, so just let's explore. Uh, now I'm gonna hit the dunes, which is right across the street, right behind me. And this side over here is the ocean behind me, uh, is the dunes, and then on the other side is the uh, El Mar Caribe. I'm gonna take my mom and my aunt uh, on that expedition now, so I'm um, having some coffee before I get there, so cheers to the next. As the sun gently embraced the morning, casting a soft glow over Salva Hotel in Salinas, the anticipation of the day's adventure fueled our spirits. With a healthy breakfast setting the tone, the excitement grew as the clock ticked towards 11 a.m., a deliberate choice to explore Dunas de los Calderas under the soothing embrace of an overcast sky, ideal for my aunt and mom. Away from the world-class resorts and cramped beaches of the Dominican Republic lies one of the country's least known attractions, a series of gilded dunes that boast their own unique ecosystem. The dunes of Bani Aca Las Dunas de Las Calderas stretch for 15 kilometers along the shores of Las Calderas Peninsula in the island's southern half. With nearly 120 million cubic meters of sand, this Saharan enclave is home to multiple striking dunes, including a 35-meter-tall knoll aptly named the Large Dune. small investment of 100 pesos, approximately $2, granted us access to the historical site. Eager to delve into the rich tapestry of the past, we embarked on a quick hike to the historic museum right at the entrance. The museum welcomed us with stories told by worn-out bunk beds, an old kitchen adorned with rusty appliances, a vivid snapshot of the lives that once thrived in this historical enclave. Floor, a panoramic view unfolded before us. Bahia de las Calderas stretched out, showcasing its serene beauty accompanied by the captivating dunes. The remnants of more bunk beds hinted at the multifaceted history that this site held within its embrace. Descending from the museum, we found ourselves in a tranquil seating area where the echoes of history mingled with the whispers of nature. A moment of rest ensued, allowing us to absorb the surroundings and plan our next moves. However, as we contemplated the upcoming hike through the challenging terrain, Aunt Esther and Mom decided to forego this part of the journey. 
The ascent and rugged landscape posed a bit too much of a challenge for their comfort. We adjusted our plans accordingly, ensuring that everyone's safety and enjoyment remained the top priorities. With a sense of purpose, I embarked on a solo hike towards the mesmerizing dunes. The undulating sands beckoned, and each step brought me closer to the heart of this unique landscape. The absence of direct sunlight allowed me to relish the coolness of the sand beneath my feet and appreciate the intricate patterns sculpted by the wind. I thought that this was gonna be everything, but it's not. Holy crap. I have a lot to go. Breather. sand deposited by nearby rivers and streams was beautifully sculpted by the area's relentless winds. The dunes date back all the way to the epoch of the Pleistocene. content of feldspars and quartz, the sand across the field features an incredibly soft texture, somewhat akin to a fine powder. As I ventured further into the dunes, the solitude added a contemplative layer to the experience. The vast expanse of Dunas de las Calderas unfolded before me, a testament to the dynamic forces of nature and the timeless beauty encapsulated within. Our hike through Dunas de las Calderas flavored with history and nature's wonders, became a chapter in our collective memory. The blend of a well-timed overcast sky, the intriguing museum, and the solo sojourn to the dunes created a tapestry of experiences that enriched our connection with both the past and the present. As we returned to our starting point, the remnants of history and the echoes of the dunes lingered in our minds, creating a vivid mosaic of a day well spent exploring the treasures that Dunas de los Calderas had graciously unveiled. I just came from over there, ladies and gentlemen, and it was spectacular, challenging, beautiful, I mean, amazing. And I made a rookie mistake of putting my GoPro inside my swimming trunks and it fell during the process of me hiking that area. I made it all the way to the other side and I realized that I didn't have it. So I had to trace myself back right away. I didn't find it. It's hard to figure out which side you took to go up. So then I went all the way thinking that I had left it somewhere else. I went, I regrouped. I said, okay, I need to take my time to see if I can find it. And fair enough, I took my time and our mother earth started raining, which actually made it better for me because when I got to it, the sand had already accumulated on top. So five more minutes and I would have lost it. I have a small video where it's actually just protruding from the um, from the sand. But then it's <laughs> amazing experience, man. I had a skier. Look, I'm all wet from the rain. And see, rain, no rain here, and raining over here. That side. Feeling accomplished. The first rays of the morning sun painted the sky in hues of gold, I woke early, invigorated and ready for the next chapter of exploration. The destination on my horizon, Las Salinas. 
the promise of an aerial view of the salt pans, salt works, or salt ponds Bani's centuries old salt production site beckoned me while driving to find the perfect spot for my drone flight. A beautiful and colorful house caught my attention. I decided to stop, and to my delight, I was warmly greeted by Rathalita. Seeking a place for an early morning coffee, I inquired, and to my surprise, she not only directed me, but opened her home to share a cup of the best Dominican coffee I had ever tasted. Esas son su familia. Oye, muy hermoso, de verdad. Felicidades. ¿Puedo pasar a su cocina? Mira, como mantiene usted la, la, las ollas bien limpiecitas, señora. Estoy con esa limpia, sí. Llevo hasta hacer la mañana la limpieza. Hasta que todo la limpieza, sí. No, usted, a mí me hacía mi mamá también. Cuando nosotros vimos que ella, ella hacía esto. Sí, tengo una que está en casa, esta soy. To my greater astonishment, she extended her hospitality and invited me in for breakfast. The unexpected warmth of the encounter added a layer of kindness to the unfolding adventure. Seated in the heart of Rafaelita's vibrant home, I indulged in a delicious breakfast, a symphony of flavors that mirrored the richness of Dominican culture. The genuine warmth of our interaction transcended the simple act of sharing a meal, creating a connection that went beyond generations. Fueled by the delightful breakfast and newfound energy, I set out for the main purpose of my journey to capture the aerial beauty of Las Salinas. The salt farm, with over 500 years of history, unfolded before me as I navigated towards Las Salinas Point. The archaic structures of the salt works stood as testaments to centuries of industry, while the mountain of salt, resembling piles of snow beneath it, painted a surreal landscape. The aerial view provided a perspective that words could not capture the intricacies of a salt-producing legacy etched into the very fabric of land. As the drone soared over Los Salinas, the juxtaposition of the salt pans against the backdrop of the Caribbean landscape created a visual tapestry of unparalleled beauty. It was a sight to behold, a testament to the resilience and timelessness of Bani's salt industry. Driven by a curiosity to understand the age-old process of salt production, I sought out the wisdom of local salt farmers. Good morning, I feel very well, thanks to God. My name is Ramon Santana. I am originally from San Jose de Ocoa but I have been living in Los Salinas for 20 years. I have built my life here with my wife, five children, and grandchildren. I mainly work in the carpentry area, covering everything related to wood and nails at the Isarnet Porto Hermoso Company. At the moment, we are pumping rainwater out of the plots with a water pump. It has been raining heavily, and for now, we cannot produce salt. We need to drain the plots before starting the salt production process. Later, we brush the crystallizers, which are the plot's condition for salt production. The process of producing salt involves seawater, sun, and breeze. That's all that is required. These are the wonders of God, everything pure and natural. Hello, my name is Romilio Rojas. I am from Bani, but currently living in Caldera. I am the winch operator, a network of interconnected ponds linked by a main path with tracks, facilitates the transport of harvested salt to an area for bagging and preparation for sale. The solar salt production process involves shoveling salt into rafts on the ponds and moving it into wheelbarrows along the tracks. The salt ponds with varying hues showcase the most eye-catching areas, the mesmerizing pink ponds. Muchísimas gracias por tomar el tiempo, no, caballero, de verdad, mira. Un placer. Se, se le agradece, de verdad, sí, no, no, estamos de, de, aquí para de eso. corazón. Estamos aquí para eso, para ayudarlo. ¡Wow! began its descent, I felt compelled to revisit Las Salinas with Aunt Esther and Mom. 
Returning to the hotel, I swiftly picked them up, eager to showcase my discovery and share in the magic of exploring the salt mines at sunset. Heading back to Los Salinas, the colors of the setting sun transformed the landscape into a breathtaking panorama. The tranquil beauty of the salt mines took on a different allure as the day transitioned to evening. Together, we marveled at the changing hues and soaked in the serenity of the salt ponds under the warm glow of the setting sun. The memories of this extraordinary day became even more vivid as we circled back to Los Salinas, adding another layer to our collective journey through history, unexpected encounters, and the timeless landscapes of Bani. Gathered around the table at Valle Las Paradas in Salinas, we were treated to a symphony of Dominican flavors, a melody of spices and laughter creating a night to remember. The taste of their culinary delights lingered as we bid adieu to Salinas, setting our compass for Nizal, the next stop on our Caribbean escapade. It was our last night with Tia Esther before we departed Salinas en route to Nizal. Peace everybody, happy. Thursday. I hope everyone is having a great day. I have completed two thirds of my trip thus far. I'm scheduled to check out today from Salinas, Bani, this area, and head over to Juan Barón, which is another section of the Peravia province, I believe. Um, and right around there, there is a beach in Nisao called uh, La Playa de los Patos where there is surfing and um, I am looking forward to spending a couple of days surfing before I head back to the States. It has been nothing but an amazing experience, you know? So on to the next. I am happy that I'm going to be able to incorporate surfing into my trip and see how the surfing on this side of the island um, is compared to the other side where uh, Cabarete, Sosua, that area around there where I have already visited and, um, and it was stay tuned because uh, it's gonna be epic y café <laughs> Navigating through the remote and bumpy roads of Nizal became a hilarious adventure, with cow spotting becoming our favorite pastime. We chuckled at every bump with the island's natural charm soothing mom's nerves. Arriving at Mingo Surf Rentals, the anticipation of hitting the waves at Pato's Beach the next day kicked in. My mom is freaking out because this beach here is super, super secluded and she's having a hard time understanding how I'm gonna get in there. But look. I got a torque, a net foot torque for a couple of days. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the beach that I'm gonna conquer. So stay tuned, it's gonna be awesome. 
with my surfboard secured and a confirmed 7 a.m. session with my surfing guru, we decided to add a fruity touch to our day. A quick stop at a vibrant fruit stand had us loading up on juicy mangoes and ripe papayas, the perfect prelude to our evening. Our day wrapped up with a delicious meal, flavored by the day's adventures at a local eatery. The icing on the cake, an epic sunset, painting the sky in shades of orange and pink as we relish the end of another incredible day in the Dominican Republic. Surfing Playa Parros in Nizal is a hidden gem guarded by the rugged driving terrain that deters the masses. This secluded beach with its left breaks, clear Caribbean waters, and the refreshing taste of coconut water offers a serene escape for those seeking a different kind of surfing experience. Yo te caché la señal, me hicieron falta palabras, fue un lenguaje corporal, todo fluido. The untouched beauty of Playa Parros extends beyond the waves, as the challenging drive ensures it remains uncrowded. Here, surfers can relish the tranquility of the surroundings, exchanging stories with locals who are the keepers of the area's rich history. <laughs> Dale guaya, que yo te doy falla, falla Deja que los cuerpos saben No hace falta más Si ya muy bien tú sabes Lo que va a pasar Tú me pones la mente a volar ah, ah. Deja que los cuerpos saben No hace falta Gentlemen, I am currently in Nizao, Dominican Republic, and I am delighted to have Joel, a local surfer from Playa Parros, accompany me. Joel, how long have you been surfing at Playa Parros? I have been surfing at Playa Parros for about 15 years now. 15 years is a long time. Yes, surfing at Playa Parros has been a blessing to me. It makes me feel alive and free. Absolutely, Joel. Absolutely. 
Just look at this stunning paradise, ladies and gentlemen. The water is crystal clear and warm. Now, let's relax and wait. Chris, everybody, happy Tuesday. I hope everyone is having a great day. So I happened, I met this lady on my way over to the surfing spot. And um, because I wanted some coffee before hitting the water. And it turned out to be a beautiful relationship. Um, I stop here every morning, I get my coffee, I get some bread, I get some cheese, some water, um, and then I hit the, uh, the beach. And then on my way back from the beach, I stopped for a couple of beers. Uh, her name is Jacqueline. So if you ever hear in Nisao, it's in front of the bus stop right over there. So there she is. She's so cute. Peace. My second day here. Playa Pato. Surfing the left break. It's amazing. So calm. So beautiful. <laughs> It's so nice that sometimes I get teary eyes by the wonders of this world, ladies and gentlemen. Super nice. If luck is on your side, you might witness a mesmerizing spectacle, a local fisherman expertly reeling in their nets, adding a touch of magic to an already enchanting coastal experience. The untouched beauty of Playa Paros extends beyond the waves, as the challenging drive ensures it remains uncrowded. Here, surfers can relish the tranquility of the surroundings, exchanging stories with locals who are the keepers of the area's rich history. From dawn until dusk, Playa Paros invites surfers to embrace the solitude and the thrill of catching waves in a place where the connection between sea and surfer is both intimate and uninterrupted a truly cherished and closely guarded secret of Nizal. You have to play really hard, there is a freaking Bridge trunk back there. That is super dangerous. telling me the fascinating story of how Dominican players get chosen to play in the MLB. First and foremost, we are in Niza, which is one of the birthplaces of MLB prospects. Dario, can you please retell the story about Niza's baseball prospects? The baseball programs in the Dominican Republic are some of the best and most demanding in the world. In fact, if a player who is not considered an MLB prospect decides to join a program outside of the Dominican Republic, he will be considered the number one prospect. The programs are designed to ensure that by the age of 16, an MLB prospect should have already signed a minor league contract by July 2. If they haven't, they are considered a failure. Despite this pressure, many prospects continue to follow their dreams and join programs outside of the Dominican Republic. However, it has been found that a high percentage of MLB prospects who make it to the MLB have received their training in Dominican baseball programs. Okay. 
night, you're not a sign. Wanna be tired on the ground. Girl, we don't got no chill. You don't know my dead man. Want me to ride? Why you take it to the mall, make a pile up. Be a type, I get done with the lotion. And that's a cause of commotion. Three love potion. She want bread for me. But no one but a girl like every belly for the J. But she still gon' come to me. Still love it, company girl. Don't need nobody else. We don't need nobody else, baby. Don't need nobody else. We don't need nobody else, girl. Just me and you. Open the sea and I can't hear your sister. I and G, girl, me and you. Open the yacht and I see X one like, oh, baby, me and you. Open the sea and I can't hear your sister. I and G, girl, me and you. Open the yacht and I see X one and I G H D. Slow motion. Cheers, everybody. Another amazing surfing session here at Playa Pato. An amazing experience. This is just, my vacation is unwinding and uh, I just wanna, you know, thank the Lord from up above from giving me the opportunity to do this and to enjoy my country to the best. Central Cordillera, nestled amongst emerald pines and cascading waterfalls, lies Jarbacoa, a mountain town whispering tales of adventure and breathtaking beauty. Here, where the cool breeze dances with sunlight filtering through leaves, and the Yak del Nord River serenades with its gurgling melody, dwells the legendary Jamaica de Dios restaurant. Its story begins long ago, woven into the tapestry of Jarabacoa's own evolution. A young local couple, Miguel and Elena, dreamt of a place where the soul could soar as high as the mountain peaks. They envisioned a haven where the bounty of the land would mingle with the warmth of Dominican hospitality, where every bite would be a whispered ode to their beloved country. In 1980, their dream materialized in the form of Jamaica de Dios, a rustic wooden structure perched on a hillside, overlooking the valley like a benevolent bird guarding its nest. From the outset, Jamaica de Dios captivated hearts. Peace everybody, happy Saturday. I hope everyone is having a great day. So I'm here at a restaurant in Jarabacoa called La Maca de Dios. And it rotates, right? So it rotates, it rotates, it rotates. And my mom is freaking out because we were somewhere over there before and now we're here in front of this view and she's freaking out. ¿Qué pasa, mami? Yo me siento que estoy en el avión aquí, hay comida, yo me siento dando vuelta. No, no te preocupes, que estamos bien. Tú estás en la tierra, todavía. En la tierra tú estoy alta, In the waning days of my Dominican adventure, I orchestrated a grand finale and jubilant gathering of family and friends at the venerable Jamaica de Dios restaurant. This celebration was not just a farewell to the vibrant Dominican Republic, 
but a culmination of the myriad experiences that had woven together to create a tapestry of unforgettable memories. Seated at the festively adorned table were not just faces, but companions who had shared in the richness of my journey. The restaurant, with its legendary status, seemed the fitting stage for our final act. The menu at Jamaica de Dios unfolded like a culinary love letter to the Dominican Republic. We savored the complexities of mafongo, the hearty simplicity of mango, and the exquisite flavors of seafood that spoke of the country's coastal heritage. Each bite was a nod to the cultural mosaic we had immersed ourselves in, where the flavors of Dominican cuisine mirrored the diversity of our experiences. Beside me were my cherished companions, my mom and family members, whose laughter had echoed through the colonial streets of Santo Domingo, resonated across the dunes of Las Dunas de las Calderas, and harmonized with the cultural beats of the salt mine of Bani. As we toasted to success, both personal and collected, the clinking of glasses reverberated with the triumph of completing a marathon that had tested not only physical endurance, but also served as a metaphor for the resilience and determination acquired during our Dominican escapade. As the night embraced us with its warmth, I couldn't help but marvel at the collective beauty of our experience. From the architectural wonders of the colonial city to the vast, mesmerizing landscapes of Las Tunas de los Colderes and the ancient traditions preserved in the salt mine of Bani, each encounter had left an indelible mark on our hearts. I knew that while the trip had concluded, the resonance of the Dominican Republic would forever dance in our memories. It was not just a dinner, it was a symphony of culture, a celebration of triumphs, and a testament to the enduring bonds created on this remarkable journey. That is delicious, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers.